Oh. Gibby, what do you got for us? You could let's just let's be clear about this. <laughs> you lost a two thousand dollars. Welcome back to Gus and Gorney. Uh, we've got a very special guest today, Gus, but before we get to him, we've got to talk about where we are. Yes. Uh, we're doing the camera. Are we filming today? It's on. Of course it is. We uh, feel, well, we've filmed every podcast yep. so far. Well, we were, we've got the away shorts on today. Yep. So I was just double checking. We're currently in uh, Mark Brayshaw's study. Stixie yep. Brayshaw's generously offered up his uh, his quarters for us to come in and record. Oh, does he know we're in here? Doesn't. No. Uh, didn't ask. And how many times have you actually been in here? It's a... Uh, that's a rare occurrence, so um, I'm probably breaking some old household rule, but um, fast and loose, living on the edge. There's more important things. We've got more important people to worry about than sticks. Can we introduce him right now? Yeah. Our guest, Adam Uze. Ooze. Yeah, guys. Um, yeah, finally. Finally got the invite, so... Um, yeah, pump. Any this tension? Is, Any tension yeah. with Simon? That's what we were going to go with, because he was lobbying. He lobbied for about a year and a half, <laughs> and you've just been invited on. Oh, I know. I got some... Um, I asked for some ideas in it today yep. um, on how he went about it, but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I was just quite surprised I wasn't invited earlier. To tell the truth, <laughs> were you? Um, I mean, we, we talk about rival podcasts a lot, and we'll get into mine and Josh Dunkley's conversation a little bit later. We will. But there was a there was a podcast at Hawthorne, Fitz and Chips, Jack Fitzpatrick and James yeah. Frawley. Did you ever yeah. make an appearance on that one? No, never. What um, was it called? Fitz and Chips. Yeah, I'd not know. bad, is it? <laughs> when you it's think about bad, it, not no. bad. But so, horrible, obviously, talent. Yeah. yeah um, I think I was a little bit... Um, above that. Too clever for that. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure who they got invited. <laughs> um, so where do we start? Do you want to... You go? Well, it's interesting. We were talking about um, about your kids. Noah's changing schools. And we got on to parenting styles. I'm interested. Um, as a coach, you're a manager of people. You're a teacher and educator. And we've got, let's put it lightly, Adam, some of the bluntest tools in the shed sitting in our midfield group. So how do you come in and obviously you've got the Adam splitters up this end of the table and then you've got James Harms's, Clayton Oliver's, Christian Batrackers. How do you accommodate, how do you coach, you? how do you draw up your plans to accommodate the whole spectrum of the rainbow? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, and that's what coaching is. Obviously, you've got to, you're dealing with different personalities and different players. So, um, but that's what I love about it. So you can't, there's no one one size fits all. So uh, there'll be some games um, where you have to obviously give some a lot more information where uh, to different players, but in other games you just let them play. So, um, yeah, I love it. And, I, and, I, and I've, I've coached in a forward line, I've coached defence before, and, and it's similar, really similar. So um, at the Hawks, the forward line was pretty much the same as what we've got here in our midfield. So they were eccentric, they were different, um, and, yeah, I had the same issues with, coaching the forwards at the Hawks, so I'm really enjoying it. Does it put you off when James um, sits a front me- and centre, a metre yeah, away from, yeah. from, no, from you with his notebook and pen and <laughs> and asks and answers every single question? Yeah, no, it doesn't put me off. I, I think it's a – like, that's him. So I would actually be a little bit surprised if he wasn't answering questions and I'd li- be a little bit worried. So um, – but you can. You can – I can picture being at Hawthorne and, and understanding where different players were sitting and, and it would be exactly the same, like – um, would have the same sorts of guys at, at the Hawks answering the same questions and um, there'll be ones that are taking notes and other ones falling asleep. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting, but that's that's why we do it and that's why we love it. All right, so we, you led us into Hawks, which is a good segue. Um, I thought your f- fishing chips one was Yeah, the that segue. could have been a good segue as well. This was a better. Okay. Um, your journey post-football. Um I'm actually a little bit hazy in how it actually happened because you were runner for a couple of years there. Yeah, yeah. So I started in 2012 yep. at the Hawks. So I was just a part-time. When did you finish up at Melbourne? Uh, 2008 was my last yep. year. So then I played I played a season at Box Hill So I'd, and then I spent a day at the Hawks. I, I was assistant coach at Box Hill. Um, so in 2009, so I sort of had a little bit of a taste of coaching yep. um, back then and then I moved away and played local footy with my two brothers down in Shep. So we went and played a couple of years down there and then, and then got back involved. So 2012, I was part-time, part-time runner and goal-kicking coach um, at the Hawks and then started as a development coach in 13. Good time to start Yeah, it was a nice time. So, yeah, and it was really, really fortunate. Like I said, um, 2012 was an amazing year, but then the learnings they got from that grand final loss um, was exceptional. So... Um, and that, that drove them for the next three or four years um, and probably was the reason why they played so well for the, that patch of time. So, 
um, yeah, yeah, it was a really nice time to get there. Now you had you had Clarko as the as school a, of Clarkson as, yeah, as yeah. the senior coach. It's Old a two team, part mate. question. First, a little bit of Clarkson v Goodwin. I want I want your opinion. And then second, Clarko's getting the band back together. Are you going with him wherever he's going next? <laughs> no. He was calling no. free agents. That was what. I, that's what we. Oh, need. really? Our mail. Well, you, if Clarko are comes knocking. Are you going? Sorry. If Clarko comes knocking, no, he needs you no. back. No, no, I love Clarko. I had I caught up with him a couple weeks ago, actually. So, um, had dinner with him what, and Karen. What was the What was the topic about? Oh, I want to. I actually had a family friend um, wanted to get in. Wanted really realistically to pay for him to go to dinner, so they we organised it and they wanted us oh, to go along okay. to make sure it wasn't awkward. So, um, yeah, cool. really nice night at Crown. Social but, lubricant. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, nah, well, he's really similar to Goody. Yep. Um, yeah, what you see on TV is a is a is a psycho, um, but behind closed doors, he he's so calm. Um, the players love him, and the way the way that he allowed us as coaches underneath him to just grow um, is really really. Similar to Goody, so um, yeah, that yeah, obviously learnt a lot underneath him, and um, really cherished my time there. That's enough Hawks. What I thought. Yeah. So mm. when did you finish up in the Hawks? What year was it? Twenty nineteen was your first year with us. Twenty twenty. Twenty nineteen. No, twenty twenty one. Last year, mate. Yeah. Hawks, and yeah. then he's only been here for a year. Yeah. yeah, he started in twenty nineteen preseason of us November. No. No. No, last year was my first year. We can cut all this out. <laughs> <laughs> We're so now, um, last year was the first year, so. And it sounds like a common denominator is Uze arrives, success follows shortly after. Is that, is that looking too much into it? Do you no, think, that's or? looking way too far into it. So, <laughs> no, that's not fair. Um, we come to Melbourne, we win a flag. What's the differences between the two clubs? Obviously, you had success at both. What's, yeah, well, what's stood out? I, I, um, I've spoken to Gorney about this before, but it was really, um, it was really eerie. I think, I think the bad taste in, in your mouth from missing a finals year before was really similar to the Hawks losing a grand final in 2012 and it that drove a, a trademark and it drove the standards and it drove the next um, few years at the Hawks. So um, I felt that when I walked in, I, I felt like there was, like you felt like you missed an opportunity to play finals year before. So it was really, well, sorry, for me, it was it was an, a really easy transition to go, well, you only have to improve this much to not only make the finals, but you never know how far you could go. So, um, yeah, like I said, I was really lucky and fortunate when I started the Hawks and t- the, where the list was at and where, where their game was at. And I feel really similar here. So I'm um, looking forward to the next few years for sure. All right, coaching done. Let's talk about yeah. Adam the player. Because oh, wow. you're pretty good. This is, um, this is what I was golf player. This is what I thought it was going to be. What's your about. handicap at the moment? I don't have a legit handicap, but I, I did. <laughs> well, when Get I did, out. when I did. No, I love my golf when I played. I just haven't had a chance to play as much now. Um, but I did get down to seven, so I know that's around your mark. Uh, 5.5 at the moment. Yeah, well, Thanks for same, asking. It's the same thing. Yeah, but mentally, when so. we play together, we're even. Anyway, go on. Adam, uh, the player. How many games in a, in a, in a row? Uh, 226 in a row. And That's incredible. Do you know that we have a player, not fast approaching, but... Could be well on his way to getting that. Who I do know because you you mentioned it to me. Well, a lot. Clayton Clayton's whatever it is. I think it's like 110 in the row or something. 150. Nah, in the yeah, row. Okay. His shoulders. Are, I'm sorry. His shoulders have been cooked for. <laughs> they're five not going to say that. <laughs> 226. He's got to play another entire career. That's yeah, three best can. and fairest. He hasn't looked like missing a game. Oh jeez. Touch, 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 touch wood, 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 wood as you can. Will the, we, but the question is, Let's will touch sticks his bell mahogany will, table? Will, will you I? drop him on game two twenty five? I won't. No, no. If he's if he if we were lucky enough to Clayton and play that many games in a row, we're in a really good spot. So um, no, I, I I honestly at that time I had no idea how many games in a row I played. Like, and that's yeah. legit. Um, Are you dropped or injured or how did uh, seven? Well, we played the first game of I can't remember what year it was, and I actually thought I played okay, but then in the ba- on the back page of the um, newspaper was about the fact whether I should be dropped and break my sequence. Um, so I had a chat. I, I would always sit down with Neil on a on a Tuesday to review the game and look at the team. And um, so I love that part of the game. So uh, at the end of that meeting, he actually mentioned he thought he just wanted to see how I was feeling with that, with all the pressure behind it or whatever. And um, and I had said I didn't care. Like that's ir- irrelevant. If I don't deserve to play, I don't deserve to play. But if my form's well enough, I just want to play. And then he mentioned something about if um, – for my teammates, he said something like, oh, look, you've got to make sure that if um, – that 
you don't want to be seen that if you're not putting your, your body on the line for this record. And I said, well, if that's the case, I don't want to play. Um, so you fell on your own sword. How yeah, admirable. well, I said, well, more to the point where I, I just said, I don't, if I didn't do that, it's it's because I didn't do it, not because of some um, record. Some record. So um, that was on a Tuesday and then on a Thursday, he just he just said, let's just take, the, take that um, stress away from you and we'll just don't play for a week and then come back the week after. So... Um, yeah, I was, I was okay with it. I ended up going back and playing at Sandin and, and then played the rest of the year. So, um, yeah, in hindsight, I, I was actually – he was doing it for me, which that's exactly what Neil did. He was just like, how can we get the best out of you and um, let's take that stress away. Um, and I think I had like – like I don't know, but I think I had 38 <laughs> when I come back in the team. So yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you got to you got to earn your spot. The Sandy team back in the day was actually hard to get Very into good. as well. I yeah. actually the stories of Michael Newton and Lyndon Dunn. You know, like back in the day in your first AFL game, and you probably had this. You'd actually don't play much game time. You would play like a couple of minutes. Yep. That was the deal at Sandy wow. for young guys. They like well, Michael Newton sat the whole game on the bench one day at VFL level. Wow. That's so him. that's how yeah, good no, Sandy they, was. Yeah, they had some amazing. Um, Great names, Ezra VFL, Boyer, Sauna. Yeah, yeah, and like high level and just strong VFL players. So, um, which was good. Like if you weren't, if you were young, I, like when I started, I played on the bench in the reserves. So like it was, if you didn't deserve a game, you, you can't get a game yet. So, yeah. and if you physically couldn't deal with playing, it's you're playing against men. Yeah. Um, it made sense that you just, you developed. So, and back then we had the twos as well. So you had VFL reserves where some of our players were playing reserves. I'd played some twos, twos games. Mm. They're not. Twos, twos. Twos, twos. Waterhouse yeah. did a couple of times as well, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon I reckon 2015 was about the last year of twos, twos. Yeah. Weren't fun, like the 10 a.m. wake-ups. Yeah. Um, well, not 10 a.m. wake-ups, 10 a.m. gets the game. Game starts. Yeah, game yeah. starts at 10. Um, 2000, do yep. you still look back on that year? Obviously, I've only played one grand final, and I felt like even if we lost it, it'd be a memorable year in my time. Do you still see that? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah we finished top four um, while we won the Brownlow. Uh, we win the first final against Carlton in an amazing game. Like we come back from nowhere and um, and then had the week off and played um, a really strong game in the prelim. So um, yeah, we we'll just yeah the whole season as a whole was amazing. Um, and then we just come up against a team to lose one game for the year and and we're stinging from the year before that they they lost the prelim that they thought they should never lose. So yep. um, and they had some seasoned campaigners that. Um, come out and bash some of the younger players. Moment early on, on there, Troy yeah, Simmons. The, yeah, Troy Simmons got knocked out, but they went. Like we had Brad Green and Brucey, and um, we had some younger boys, Jeff Farmer um, and myself, and um, and they just come pretty hard at us. So Greeny kicked five in the prelim. Greeny played well in the prelim or the qualifying final. Wizard kicked not pretty hard. Seven. Kicked five in the prelim. Yeah, it is. Well, Wizard kicked about seven in the prelim. So yeah, right, seven. Yeah, that's yeah. Why he plays forward. I was in the run. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit harder. How does he bring that into this conversation? We're talking yeah. He's done that. <laughs> I don't know, man. It happens. It happens more often than I care to admit. And then it's funny how you, you know, you obviously lose, and then it's how that's quickly. Not, that's it, not that funny. It comes and it goes, and then funny. yeah, okay, Max. Well, he does this sometimes as well. When you get back into him, yeah. he sort of fires up a little bit, yeah, and that yeah. goes after you a little bit. So, have, do you, you, have you got a question? I do. I was going to okay, ask. Sorry. It. Tell you what. It's the Gus and Gorney show, man. He's, he's buying <laughs> so much time here. Um, no, so <laughs> do you think that – do you get the same joy, obviously, without having won one as a player, but getting close and getting that taste? Do you feel like as a – you know, your footy career, would you look back and feel fulfilled that even though you've missed out as a player, does getting him as a coach, you, does it feel different? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a hard one. Like, in the end – look, I'm not sure what goals you guys would have um, when you're looking at your – Oh, sorry, goals. What's that? <laughs> sorry. He can't help himself, mate. Just keep. But if you set goals as a player, you want to obviously get as much as you can out of your career. And if when you finish, you look back and just be really proud of what you could, what you got out of yourself. So, um, I think as a group, we would have thought as a group that we did. Um, yes, we didn't win the grand final, but we played a lot of finals footy, and um, we were a little bit up and down. But that's that's how close it can be. So we spoke about that this year with our with you boys about if you drop off. 2% that you could miss the miss the final. So we went from playing in the grand final in 2000 and just missing the finals in 2001. Um, but in the second half of the year, we started coming. So we could see that it, yeah. geez, if we had, if we hadn't dropped off or if we didn't didn't have those operations early in the year. So, um, yeah, so in the end, it, not, not just, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel fulfilled. I don't, well, sorry, I don't feel empty that I didn't win one as a player. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like we got the best out as, as we could and, 
we come up against Essendon and we come up against Brisbane Lions and win three. So when we're in really good form in the early 2000s, we've come up against some amazing teams. So, um, yeah, it's just not our time. Did that... Was that good enough for you? That was a good question. Okay, just checking. Um, how this weird one had better be good. How weird is a coaching Taj and Jack Viney and maybe uh, Joel Smith? Did you play with Sean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it is. And, and and to be fair, Taj is obviously um, – it feels I feel closer to Taj because we've grown up together. I've yeah. obviously played a lot of footy with he's um, living Shane. Here now. And he's here, yeah. Um, and he was born the same day as my daughter. Yep. Um, same hospital. and That's So cool. we've got this connection and that – because of his dad and I really tight. So Todd, um, I still did have the same feeling for Jack and you, you might have noticed in meetings, and I, like it's hard, I see him as this little kid that was at Junction Oval running around kicking a footy and when I first started. So, and my locker was right next to Todd. So, um, so I looked up to Todd as this amazing leader and um, just so hard um, as a player. And then to have his son and coach his son and, and, and the tra- exact traits are replica. so, yeah, so similar. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can't help but feel that it's just a different connection. So it's hard. Look, Taj is. I've watched even watching watching the twos last weekend. It's hard to take more. Like you just sort of look at him more than yeah. the other players for some reason, um, as you would if it was your own family. So he, um, did he ever call you Uncle Adam or Uncle Ooze? He might have as a, as <laughs> yeah, as a young fellow. Yeah, yeah, just out of funny. respect. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. He st- I bet he, he doesn't sh- do he it still anymore. Does he? Really, yeah, he well, still should. He could bring it back. Um, we asked this to Goody with Eddie. Because Goody's the best Adelaide player of all time. I can put Rashudo and Modra and whatnot in there, but he's Did one he of the best. Did he say that? Or? He, a I quote, think he might have quote, said that. Quote. Cool. <laughs> quote. Okay. And then he's gone and coached the flag for Melbourne. Who does Eddie go for? So um, you, Noah, during the peak going for football years, he's, he's, he's at Hawthorne. Yeah. Yeah. But his old man's it? a hero. But he's a hero of Melbourne. Yeah. So I've got a photo in Noah's room of, I think it was... Yeah, it was my last game. So Noah's this big, like yep. walking out on the ground, the ground. And he had no idea. He had no idea about his colours other than he was just walking out on the MCG and there's just grass everywhere. So so he had no idea. So Jazz had a soft spot for Melbourne, even when I was coaching at Hawthorne. Yep. Um, but as a young kid, when you just start loving the game, it's when you're six and seven. That's when I started at the Hawks. And then to go into the rooms. Like I remember as a kid when I, when I was young, and if I met a player, like if I met Tim Watson, he got a signature off Tim Watson after a game. Because I was a mad Essendon fan, like that, that just made my whole year. Yep. Um, so for Noah to be able to go and walk through the rooms at training and kick the ball around with Josh Gibson and things like that, um, yeah, that, that was just game over. He wasn't back from any, anyone else other than the Hawks. So have um, we got him back? Oh yeah, no doubt. He's back. Oh yeah, yeah, he's mad. So and and to be fair, a lot of his fa- friends, like Brownie's boys, and they're all Melbourne fans. So whenever they come around, we're watching the D's and they're cheering their house down. So. I think yep. there was a queen. There was an Easter game where you may have missed a goal right at the end of the game. Ground <laughs> against okay, yep. the game. I don't want to bring that, that up. No, no, no. You, you I didn't mean that, but we, I just remember that you day. Speak about the highs, mate. We should be able. Well, to that's speak right. About the lows. That, but that wasn't part of the story. It was more about Kynan's boys or Melbourne yep. gear or whatever. Noah goes and runs and grabs one of my jumpers and yep. put it on. So be, because his best mates are, he would have taken off pretty quickly post game. <laughs> yeah, though, he, he did. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. Now they're right back into it now. So it's good. How's your Achilles? Good, yeah, I'm right. I can run now, so wow. yeah. It, um, I put on a few extra kilos in Perth, so being able to run is a good thing. Nothing so. wrong with that, mate. Happens to the best. Of it us. does, yeah, it does. Angus has been known to put on a couple of extra kilos at different times <sighs> in his career. Yep. So we were all right so with that. Is, um, oh, right yeah. now, you're at good weight. Very. Good. Is that a question? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm fucking great. Yeah. Very very You've had to bulk yes. up a little bit to go back now. Back in the men's department, certainly yep. requires a few extra kegs. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so that you can only do that for a couple of weeks. And I can flick that switch. I can good, flick good. It. Like it goes no, both ways good. too. All right, I want to talk COVID quickly. What? Yeah, weirdly, but it's a funny one. What's Slightly funny? Sorry, funny. mate. What's funny about COVID? What's the slightest bit funny about the, the virus that's killed millions? And okay, don't put that on me. So we've got a new app where we upload our testing into this app. And it goes straight to the AFL, some uh, cloud somewhere. Vax Vault. Vax Vault. Yeah. And, and we got to do that every, every day. Oh, but before that app came in, we had to send it to our line coach well, we'll at 6 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> Adam Uze, yeah. for I'd, I'd say a month, Yeah, every morning would get 16 text messages. Well, let's talk about starting that. Starting <laughs> from 5.30. So starting yours from, was 5.30. Yeah, I went in early. Oh, to be fair, that was <laughs> that Was, it, was, was it always 16 blokes or was there a bit of a drop No, nah, there was some that were a little bit later. Mm. Um, so it would be in meeting would come to the club go to a coach's meeting and then I've, in the back of my mind of Clayton hasn't sent his yet or 
Um, it was always Clayton and Harmsy. So um, I'd get, then rush my phone to make sure they've sent it or send them a message to say, come on, this needs to be through. So, um, yeah, that was tough. How many Because I the had the hardest photo? group. Was it how many were the same I, photo? No, nah, none would have done of them. One like, test. Like, like, different done lightings, test. different backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Like there might have been different te- techniques with all that, but I, I took it that they weren't in the same oh, area. Well, bless you, um, Adam Uzo. Yeah. Um, amazing. That's I've got I've got through. one more, and okay. it's a serious ending. And sure. then um, I'm yeah. happy to end seriously. Um, ten years since Jim's uh, passed away, and uh, I only had two years with him. They're the best two years I've had at the football club, and. Um, an incredible person. You obviously got to know him a whole lot more than what I did. Um, did you play together? Yeah. Yes, yeah. so played together. Yep. Um, what are some of the memories of Jim that you can think of? Yeah, I'll, he was an amazing player. Um, but apart from that, like my first my first two years, he ran like a, it wasn't a development program, but he ran like a mindfulness session for the first the four-year players just off his own bat because he worked with younger people yep. um, with reach. And, and some of the sessions that he ran with, us as young players were amazing and it was all about yeah like mindfulness mental strength there's all these different um theories and they were based on dealing with injury dealing with anxiety dealing with these things and um he took us back to when you were a kid and um yeah so and they were they were out there the sessions that he ran but they were amazing and they're, they're memories that I, I do remember so um vividly um so he was not only just a great player, but it, as a leader, he was amazing. But then, yeah, his mental capacity to, to push through injury and things like that. Some of the stories he told us about some of the injuries he played with um, leading into a game, fitness fitness tests and with broken ribs and things like that and, and what they put him through. But the 10 minutes before that, sitting in a sitting in a cupboard doing breathing techniques about how to get this pain away from his ribs um, was next level. So... Um, you can see why he, he fought that um, disease for a long time. Yeah, he was a he was a man certainly ahead of his time with that mindfulness stuff because now that is almost in practice. Yep. Yeah, flat out. every day yep. at the football club. Yep. But Jim's trying to do it through the nineties, which I'm sure would have been one of the hardest things going yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, and that's why. And back then it was just it was different. Like yep. it was weird. Like we were in these sessions going, "This is a bit weird." Um, turn the lights off, lie down, and, and he's talking through like these scenarios about. I can't believe that. Like another player doing the mindfulness yeah. session would be phenomenal. Yeah, track done is amazing. A couple of times. Did he? Maybe, maybe that was. No, he did a stretching session. Yeah. Bit different. Yoga or something like that. Yeah, uh, Jim, he was an amazing man. All right. I'm happy to leave it on that note. So am I. You've been a great guest, Adam, and yeah. we did our research before we got Sparks on you, and you don't have any minority stakes in small businesses, so there's no opportunity for sponsorship. However, you are a big Nina and Pasadena man, so yes. can you call your people over there and see? So, buddy. Yeah, just talk just to Bud. See if he's got something for us. We'll get a t-shirt or something. Yeah, I'll see if we can. We'll get Sparks under um. We'll Wait, get t-shirt or art smocks? Mine were pretty big. See, that's the thing because <laughs> I, I had I had to get it's an exercise. So right now yep. I'm swimming in it. Okay, yeah. yep. it's a good look. Yeah. No, well, I haven't worn it, so I'm looking for someone big that needs two jumpers. Oh, we can I don't talk to some of our people at Squash or Clutch and Co. Yeah, and we'll we'll connect some dots, make some things happen. But yeah. thank you very Thanks much for you. coming on, mate. Um, hope you enjoyed the sticks is at office. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And um, you handled yourself very well. Thank you. We'll be back after this. Now, Gus, we all know the team at Zurich Insurance are proud sponsors of the Gus and Gorney podcast. Yes, absolutely. Huge supporters of the pod. I think they were our first sponsor and certainly our first platinum partner, which is a huge result. Yes, and they've also been on board as a co-principal partner of the club since 2018 and have been protecting Australia for over 100 years. That's right. They provide insurance for individuals and families, plus businesses large and small. Now, Gussie, we know you're a big fan of protection, rocking your helmet at every chance you get, so this is very on brand for you. You're absolutely right. To see how Zurich can support you, head to zurich.com.au or contact your financial advisor or broker. Welcome back. Uh, Just to start off, big thanks to Zurich. Um, Huge thanks to them. Yeah, they literally are the king of sponsorships. Yeah, um, boy, if I... If I ever need insurance, you know where to for go. Life or otherwise, yeah, probably that's the first place I'll go. And then a, a also a big thanks, but not as big as Zurich, just a smaller level below to our friends at Sporting Globe. Yep. And then I guess you know it'd Everyone be remiss else. of us not to mention every single other sponsor we've got. So yep. congrats to all them. Nina and Pasadena. Yeah, uh, the freshly on. new one, which is good for Gibbo. Um, I'm sure you. Yeah, you would actually. Pasadena man goes, would get go some, with the watch. You get some tops, don't mind it. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. Second segment today. How was the um? How was the Mad Monday for cricket? Mad Monday, not too mad. Yeah, you didn't do one. Uh, no, but I did have the Premiership Cup that day. So, oh, uh, you've uh, got, a cu- got the cup. Some, 
Melbourne cricket club. Quarters. Oh, I thought you took it to your cricket man. Nah. Man, I was about to say that's pretty rowdy. <laughs> that would yeah, have been funny. <laughs> wouldn't have come back. What did you do the cup? Did Nana Gibby? Um, so? I did take it to Nana Gibson. Yep. So I thought she was on the blacklist after a choice words for our podcast. <laughs> I'd love to see a photo of Nana Gibby in the cup. All right, I'll send it to you after. Did you, I'm sure you've got one. I do have one. Yeah. Okay. Well, because. It's quite topical photos because we've been getting them sent to us. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got a lot of photos sent to us. Um, um, people are seeing Gibby in the flesh and they send it to us, which I like. That's a bit of a recurring theme, isn't it? We've got a few of you. Lingers is another one. Lingers and in the wild. Lingers in the wild and Gibby in the flesh. Yeah, same, it's much the same concept. But um, have so, you noticed an increase in people stopping you randomly on the street? Like Connor, I think his name was. Where was this? At the precinct on Saturday night, he he wanted a mention on the podcast. So I sort of brushed it. I What's said his name? I'm probably not going to bring it up. Yeah, but here he Connor? is. Connor. So, yeah, so he'll be really happy with that. Connor. Well, congratulations. I, I think Connor started something. I think Gibby in the flesh. If you see Gibby, we would like to see a photo. Yeah, and then obviously, and we can. What we can do is we can give out a Sporting Globe voucher for the best photo we get. That's for our, our Sun, friends. Uh, Lingers. What was Lingers one? Positive. Ling- oh, um, Ling- Wild Sun. Wild, Wild Sun. Ling- well, Lingers in the Wild? Lingers in the Wild or Wild Sun. We'll get the people to vote on that. I'm actually looking at Jasper White, who I'm going to read post. Um, got a piece of Lingers at Spacey Jane, which is some oh, sort of festival, I believe. Yeah, Spacey Jane's your yeah, yeah, modern day sticky fingers. Yeah, it makes me sick to my guts looking at it. But um, he found him and got a photo. Lingers participated. So. Okay, so we got Sporting Club vouchers for the best photos with Gibby in the flesh or and Lingers soon. in the Wild. Wild Sun. Um, but let's get them going. I look um, forward to my next week of outings. Yeah, well, it's good interaction with the people, so um, there's nothing wrong with that. Once again, I might add, there is no reward for any photos of Gus or Gorney in the yeah, flesh. Yeah, we, we give you- In fact, you punishment. Mm, <laughs> mm, yes, we, and that's a great point you just brought up. Don't for a second get it mistaken because that will, um, that'll be bad. You won't get a Sporting Globe yeah. voucher. In fact, we'll probably we'll speak to our people and try and get you banned from the sport, all Sporting Globe venues if you come up to us and ask for a wild photo. All right, what do we got? That's that not. is a great deal. I've got an even better deal. This is an exclusive membership offer. Oh, I thought it was something to do with watches. No, or this is for Gus and Gorney fans. Really? Yes. So, have you heard of this? No. No, this is fresh. So you can use the code Gus or Gorney. We want to see who gets more. And members can sign up. Go to membership.melbournefc.com.au. Sign up for a three-game membership and they'll get a second three-game membership for free. So wow, that's yeah. a podcast exclusive offer. Any um any merch we can chuck in or oh you can if you like this is your your show yeah I mean we probably we've run out of all the lingers shirts we need to think of a new gimmick for merchandise Gibby in the flesh <laughs> Gibby in the flesh Gibby could, in the flesh could could be something we run with I can see wild soon like lingers like looking a bit like <laughs> bit you know ragged like in like a jungle or something like hiding behind a tree or something or that's or, good though I reckon I honestly think Gus will get more mentions see, just because it's the start of the the only hope I've got. And I'm saying this, I'm speaking this into existence. Less is letters. Sympathy. Yep. I'm going to say sympathy. Because they're like, you know, Gorney gets all the, you know, you get every, you're the skipper of the club. And it's quicker to type. I do have efficiency, yeah. but I'm going to say there'll be a sympathetic contingent of my vote. And if it's big enough, I'll win. But I suspect that. that Can we get some numbers skipper. reported? Yeah, we'll give the fans a week. Yeah. So till next Tuesday. I yeah. bet. The, um, here's the thing though. And. Could be way off base here. I assume the people who are listening to this podcast are probably already signed up. I reckon there'd be a few that aren't. I've come across some just casual. I've come across fans. some um, just not even Melbourne supporters. Yeah, not Actually, even yeah Melbourne I think supporters. there probably so, should be a few. Yeah, I reckon you got that wrong. Yeah, we want non Melbourne supporters signing up. We want anyone. So competition is on. Okay. Yeah, sign up at the website. They'll get a call from someone working for the club and they can get all the details for the second member. So great deal. Uh, a podcast exclusive. Good start. Which is nice. That, that is, is a good big. start. We can talk some footy. Yep. Um, sure. Should we start with the win? Yeah, a little win against dogs. Yep. Um, it got built. I mean, the, it's rare that you play the same team twice and it's six months between. Um, that has to be rare, doesn't it? Well, there's no. I don't think the grand final rematch has really ever happened. The only way it would happen if you played someone in round 23, then played them in round one again. Yep. That would be the. But to, to play the same side twice over six months, it means you're thinking about one team for a long time. It's quite refreshing doing some stuff on Gold Coast this week. Yeah, it's certainly a change up. We've um yeah, as you've said, like that's all we've really been building up for. Yeah. And the media have piled on it, like everyone's building it up and, you know, making it a big deal, which you know it's around the first game of the year sort of thing. Yeah. So I get that. But boy, it was a big build up. It was a big build up. Uh, they they chucked in the song again, which I thought was done after the fourth day of yeah, the break, season. but they brought the song back again, which was good. Um but 
in the end, it was very, very similar to the grand final. Spooky. I think time. the quarter time score was your exact. Well, was it four five twenty nine? Waitman kicked the goal. That it yeah. would have been the same score if not for that goal. Ah, okay. I thought, and then there was one point in it at yeah. half time. And then they well, they kicked eight in a row at one stage, but yeah, eerily similar to half time. Yeah. Well, their goal, like Trelaw's goal, was like tr- the same yeah. as yeah. Trelaw's goal in the granny. Um, yeah. The only thing that didn't happen was the Angus Brayshaw going back with the mark. Yeah, I was, the I, I was in the men's department down the other end of the ground, unfortunately, so yeah. I couldn't. It just, you know, the writing wasn't on the well, wall. Well, Bowser kicked a goal. Yeah, so he took my goal. But anyway, it was a good game, and we won, which is also good. Yeah. Uh, obviously, some really important stuff happened at half time. Able to reset again, see where doggies were scoring, um, and then we all sat back and watched the Petraka and Bailey Fritz show, similar again, to what we yeah, watched on wow. Grand Final Day. Two point the sad news from that was Salem went down, so he's going to be out for six to eight with his knee. He had surgery on Friday. Successful surgery, always successful. Disco Turner also uh, also out. lives he's here. He's out for four to six, actually. He's out Disco. for four to six. Yes, he's in a moon boot. Yeah, he gets out of it tomorrow. Does fun he, fact. He lives here too. Also a fun fact. Yep. And do you want to mention the third one who lives here as well? Judd McVie, yep. affectionately known as Knuckle. If you want to have a funny <laughs> 20 seconds, Google Knuckle Shoal. Then Google and then Judd Google McVie. Judd McVie and hold the portraits up side by side. A bit of fun. Other injury news, Riv is a chance to return. I've heard that on the Great Bond. Back in the main training. Um, yep. you got Lever, Hibbo, Chandler, all a test later in the week as well. So a little bit of positive news there. But How's our boy Petty going? He's three to four. Three to four. Yeah. So and that's the whole list? And that's the injury report. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Gold Coast this week. Yep. Um, they were good. Yeah. West Coast. West Coast were undermanned with COVID, but... Gold Coast look good. Some good kids. I'm bullish. Rare. I'm bullish about Gold Coast and what they can do this year. Um, I think they got tremendous players. Like oh, took, I love Took Miller. Took Took Miller and and Matty Rao in the middle there with Noah Anderson. Um, Big Witsy's back, who I've had just some genuine battles with in my time. Two captains, tallest coin toss ever. Wow. Hopefully they don't send Took to the coin toss and they send Witsy. Yeah, we'll would probably. be an anti climax if Took came. Yeah, I mean. We'll- yeah, it could be the tallest coin toss ever. I think we got to pull a few strings there, make that happen. But yeah. um, I like the way they play. I think the game styles changed a little bit from just watching that last game, and they're a bit more forward half footy, more surge, less chip mark. So it's going to be an interesting game. Two similar game styles, so it should be good. Yeah, ranking as well, dangerous. Um, I, I remember some... ranking quite well. Yeah. I think I tapped one to him for his <laughs> fourth did. goal of that game. Yep. Um, yeah, <laughs> rank, <laughs> ranking complaint. In GWS. Yep. 2020. Um, yeah, it was a good round of footy. Another one is Buddy Franklin. So he's 996 at the moment. Friend of the podcast, Buddy. Nino Pasadena. Pasadena. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I mean, it sort of counts. Yep. We take any sort of tie. <laughs> there was a lot of hype for him. I didn't, Like five goals is a big ass. He's, now he needs four. Do you yep. think he'll get it? They've got Geelong at the SCG. No. Nah. Who's round know? three? Bulldogs at Marvel. Oh, wow. He might not even get it there. Watch him kick one goal, four. Then he's got something. North. He likes playing against North. Could be North. I reckon he'll kick, kick 13 against North one day. Well, I don't, I, I'm, you can kick five against a good side yeah. like, and still lose. So it's more like looking at who he's going to be the matched matchup. up on. And I'm starting to think maybe Geelong might be okay. Yeah, like, look. Jack Henry and Colin Jasney, they're really good really good players. But they've got Buddy, Hayden McLean, Luke Parker kicked five. Yeah. Isaac Heaney. Yeah. Isaac Heaney. Good side, Sydney. Could be a good battle. Is that at the SCG? Yep. Oh, wow. Well, he does it there then, doesn't he? Yeah, I might fly up. I would go to the Marvel game, I reckon, if, if it makes it to Bulldogs. If he kicks two this week. Would you, you run, run on the ground? ground? Oh, know. unreal, Can mate. you take a microphone and do a live cross for us? I can try. Yeah, yeah. Gus and Dorney exclusive. And get your microphone to try and yeah. weave through. I'll He's a crack. friend of the podcast, I'll, so I'm sure he'd come to if you. If it happens, I'll, I'll have a crack. Imagine the amount of Gibby in the flesh photos <laughs> oh, in be. the middle of Marvel. I remember when um he kicked his 100th goal. Way, way, way back, there were other Hawthorne players on the ground getting photos yeah, with random punters. <laughs> I imagine it'll be he goes out, gets the quote with Buddy, and then just hangs around and people start getting flesh. Well, what would you do if you were playing for Sydney or Bailey Fritch's lineup for his thousandth goal? Mm. Are we are we getting as close as we can to Bailey and then we just huddle, or do we run off the ground? I'd run off the ground. You can't leave him one out. Yeah, but the security guards will security circle. Security took him. Buddy off when he kicked his hundredth. Okay. Do you reckon they'll take him off? Yeah. If I don't know. Well, Gil, didn't Gil give it the all clear or something? Gil did, yeah. <laughs> oh, they asked him on AFL 360 and he basically said he isn't, he can't say yes to it, but yep. he wouldn't mind seeing it happen. It's a great look. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, it is a good, it, it probably, I mean, I'm not cutting Jack Rewald or 
um, Josh Kennedy and guys that are in and around the 600 short, but I don't think they're going to get to 1,000. No. So it's probably the last time it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. You've just got to be make sure you're not the very first bloke to hop the fence because the security guards always pick one. <laughs> Someone might kick 100, 100 again. That could happen. Do you reckon? That could happen. The game could go all the way back to 100, 100 again. Jeez, well. 66, center clearances. Yeah. High scoring. Chance. Mate, look, Luke Parker's on thousand. target to get 100 this year. Mate, the two debutants yeah. are on target to get 100 this year. Martin Nick and Martin. what's the Adelaide? Well, yeah, Josh Rack. Rochelle? I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. No, nor am I. Well, we'll see. And look, if I'm, I'm happy to be proved wrong. I think it's an awesome spectacle. So I hope yeah. when he does kick it, it happens. And it happens. All right, tell me when our girls are playing. So they've had to be pushed back a week. So Collingwood were hit pretty hard by COVID. Yep. We were going to play... Max the, thinks that's funny. We were going to play <laughs> the winner of Collingwood and Brisbane. That's been pushed back a week. So now Brisbane and Collingwood played this weekend. Yep. We'll play the winner of the weekend after. And that'll be a Saturday, likely at Casey, not confirmed at this stage. Get yep. it to the G. I want the fans to be aware of the fact that the next week, if we were to win the prelim, so it's getting a bit ahead of ourselves, and if Adelaide was Adelaide to win their double prelim, book. then Adelaide would host the grand final on a Saturday, but the boys play on the Thursday night in Adelaide as well. So fans could go over. Three days. Wow. Get a round four at Adelaide City Oval. Churches. And a Watch grand the final girls. So. Watch a round four, top four clash from last year and then the chill around final. and maybe a winery. I don't want to pump up the SA city, too much because I'm, the city of I'm churches. a Victorian. So there'd be churches. Nice you can get some wine in here. Friday and support the girls. That's a long way. Away, I might see if I can stay he, up there for a couple of days. He's speculating. speculating. He is speculating. So we've got to get Casey done first uh, Casey, against yeah. Brisbane or Collingwood. Correct. Yep. Um, I might actually, I might watch the Brisbane Collingwood game just to get a couple of little... Bit of a feel for it. Bit of a feel for it. And then see if I can give some tips. Not that Piercy needs them because no, um, she's a much better player than me. But uh, have we got anyone that's that's good for the break? Like, was there an injury cloud? Edo missed the last game of the season, so she would have been right for the prelim. She was good to go no matter she'll, what. But she'll, I'm sure she would have enjoyed it. They were off playing mini golf last night, so... What do you do like, for a well, random... Three, three, what, three weeks off, is that. it? Essentially, you yeah. you guys played had one game in twenty seven days or something. Yeah. yeah, you guys had a hit of even golf. now we're sort of like we played I've north. Also played a lot of we've golf. played north and we've had two games in the space of thirty days. It's a bit weird, yeah. isn't it? Um, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm presuming we'll get some big numbers down at Casey, um, especially if it's Collingwood. I mean, that would be that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be a, a good play. So. Um, but Brisbane are a pretty hard team to get past. Yeah, so. they won it last year. So good luck, Pies. All ahead of us. Um, All ahead of us. Do you want to give us an update on how you went on the the, the rival podcast? Well, I wanted to talk about. Um, you spoke to Dunks about his rival podcast I did. after the game. Did you hear this? Oh, I've heard a whisper. So I um, shaking hands after the game. I went to Dunks. Um, don't know him too well. I've met him a couple of times. I actually awkwardly saw him in the toilet at Brownlow night when like the two teams were sharing the same toilet, and we had to have that awkward chat while both yeah. standing at the urinal. Interesting night. Though. Yeah, oh, interesting tough. night. That was an extremely weird moment. Um, Anyway, yeah, so after the game, I, I said, um, I see you in the podcast game. Who, with, it's him and Trelaw, huh? Him and Trelaw. Yeah. And I just presumed that he knew that I was in the podcast game. They've got a, I've seen this one, you know how re- articles randomly pop up on your Facebook? They've got a bromance, those two. Yeah, they are. They're, they're bigger than me and you. Oh, well, I think, yeah. We talk once a week and it's on the podcast. And I, you know. I don't, how genuine can it be? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm wondering if that's you know they're just trying to build their podcast up. That would be a suggestion. No, no, no. I reckon, I reckon it's a strong bromance. I probably reckon it's a strong bromance. Um, well, you've, 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 we've got to be careful because you don't have a great track record in commenting on other teams. Sure. Um, so Josh goes, uh, yeah. You, did you give it a listen? And I go, no, nah, I haven't got around to it. Have you listened to ours? And then he just laughed. So I'm not sure if he didn't hear me. Or if he's laughing at our podcast. Could be either. I, I'm running with he didn't hear me and was too polite to say yeah. anything else. So he just like... He seems <laughs> polite. Um, so that's just a little update on Dunks. Our boy, what, big what? boy, fun fact, you know, everyone's doing their Telstra post at the moment. Yep. Go have a look at his. It's all, it's all time. It's okay. track the world. Is um, it going to be still be up? Yeah, it's still okay. be up. All right. Well, I'll, um, I'll do that straight away. My podcast uh, foray into the Hamish Nanny podcast world couldn't have gone worse. Um they when I has it been aired yet? Do we? Uh, I'm you? pretty sure it has been. Okay. Yeah, I'm not spoiling. I'm not any spoiling. Um, not doing any spoiling. Sorry, but we. Uh, well, I you said, are. I mean, in realistically, you are spoiling. Uh, in game day now, which is fun. See ball, punch ball. See ball, punch. Yeah, and uh, that's the that's what you've got to be able to flick that switch when you go back into the men's department. But <laughs> went to Hamish and Andy. I said I could pour. Um, 
any different wine glass uh, didn't matter the shape, um, the dimensions, I would be able to pour it to a similar, well, a pretty much bang on sort yep. of line. And they took that literally. Yep. So uh, I probably didn't expect... You didn't expect it to be didn't literally. Didn't expect the... they Instead of going like a little bit different here and there, one's a little bit taller, one's a little bit shorter, one's a little bit thinner, skinnier, fat or whatever. They've gone... They went pretty hard. Um, one was just barely up to the level of the bottom of one and one was this big goblet. It was... They went... They stitch up. I went extreme, and yeah. and that's I guess the whole point of their so um, you cannot, their shtick is you cannot say you have that skill. I don't have that skill. No. So um and they and they gave me a few what, tokens of no value. Yep. So I've got them to show for it, but they're worthless. So um had a good time though. It was uh they're very funny and um we we did speak a little bit about the um warring podcast the sort yep. of factions that are, I was surprised they w- would have me on based on our um. Yep. That way, com- competition. But and I think Hamish said a a rising tide lifts all boats, yep. or something like that. He's a very wise man, so um, that was good. They they are very funny, and uh, yeah, so I cannot for the record let the record show clearly. I cannot pour equal <laughs> wine into glasses of varying shapes and sizes. So thank you very much for having proved that. That's just about it, isn't it? It's all for me. Anything else? Um, thanks, Sticks and Deb. I know you listen. Um, for giving us your house, and we'll put the chairs back. And I definitely won't take um, a couple of your nice bottle sticks and take them home. Over.